guys and welcome back to my channel. So a little over a month ago, I posted a video pretty much just showing you guys some of my favorite study hacks and just like how I study. And I got some really good feedback from you guys on that video. A lot of you guys said it was helpful, which seriously means the world to me that I can help at least one of you out. And I ended up rewatching the video last night and I realized that there's actually so much more that I have to tell you guys. And I feel like with every exam, I learned something new on how to study or, you know, how to ace a test or something like that. So in today's video, I'm really just going to be telling you guys some of my favorite study hacks. So this is going to range from note taking to planning how you study to actually studying. So there's kind of a couple parts and I'll put a little timestamp on the screen kind of based on if you want to watch a certain part or not. If you happen to be new to my channel, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. I am a senior at UNC Charlotte this year and I just post videos on here about school and lifestyle and stuff like that. But I would love if you would join the fam. Cleo has her eye Oh, girly. I feel like any time I start filming, she notices something that she wants to play with. Literally every time. One last thing before we get started. If you have any kind of study hack or study tip, I would love if you would drop me a comment below and just leave it so that everyone else can see the way that you like to study. In this video, I'm just telling you guys what works for me. So I'm sure there's so many other things that work for you that I will not mention. So definitely share as much as you can in the comments. All right, so I have a lot to tell you guys. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so the first life hack I have for you guys is just to first and foremost, make sure you're not taking on too much or biting off more than you can chew. And this can go for so many different aspects. And I'm talking like work, extracurricular activities, making plans with friends, when you completely forget that you have like three tests that week. So as many of you guys know, this semester I'm actually not working at a restaurant like I used to for the past two and a half years. But when I did work at the restaurant, what I would do was at the beginning of the semester when I would get my syllabi, I would look at each of the dates that I would have an exam and I would go ahead and request off work the two days prior to those exams because that way I didn't have to worry about getting scheduled, I didn't have to worry about getting my shift taken or calling in sick. And I've actually made a whole other video kind of talking about this, but if I were you, I would try your best if you are having a heavy workload during the semester, I would just try your best to have a job that allows you to make your own schedule so you can avoid any scheduling conflicts. So you guys might remember, but a couple months ago I was very fortunate enough to work with Rover, which is pretty much a dog sitting app. So you can either register to find a sitter with Rover or you can register as a pet sitter and I was so happy when I read the comments on my last sponsorship with Rover because so many of you guys signed up and have been making good money with them which makes me so happy and I think someone actually commented on my video saying they make like $500 a month with Rover and if you choose to board pets instead of just walk them you can actually make so much more money so if you have your own apartment in college boarding pets is definitely a great way to make money versus clocking into some kind of part-time job. I've mentioned this before, but Rover is a service that I have been using for quite a while now. When I was in Hawaii, I had someone watch Cleo via Rover when my mom, who was babysitting her, went to South Africa, so that was awesome. The lady did such an amazing job, and I'm also registered on there as a pet sitter, so if I ever need extra money, I can literally just open up my availability in my area. And what's cool is you can do Rover even between a busy school schedule, because if you're just walking dogs instead of boarding, you only have to be with the pet for like an hour max so that really doesn't take up that much of your study time and at the same time you're still making that money that you need to live and then if you choose to board dogs instead you just have them at home with you and you can cuddle with them while you study the sign up process is pretty easy they do make sure you do a background check which obviously you should probably get a background check if you're babysitting animals but yeah I will have that link down below for you guys let's move on to note taking. So this is something that I could honestly probably talk for hours about. Throughout my years in college, I think I'm finally realizing that for each class, you're going to take notes differently. So for example, a lot of professors will post their notes online beforehand. And if they do that, I honestly don't recommend sitting in class and just like copying them down because I feel like then, I mean, like I know for some people it helps with retention, but I feel like then you're not really able to listen to the professor because you're too busy writing notes down. So instead, what I do in pretty much all of my classes is I have the notes pulled up on my laptop 
while my professor is going through the slides. And then if my professor mentions anything that's not on the slides, I will either open up the slideshow and add it to it or I'll just like on a separate sheet of notebook paper or on my laptop, I will type in something extra and just make sure I bold, italicize it because if your professor mentions it, it might end up being on the test depending on how their forte is. Some professors like to be sneaky and add stuff in and some just go by the book and based off what's on their slideshow. So it's really about understanding how the professor is. Now this semester I have been trying a new little technique and I wasn't too sure if it was going to work at first, but holy moly you guys, I, I can't believe it's actually working. So as I said, a lot of my professors post their PowerPoints and I honestly can't study from a slideshow. Like for me, it's just confusing to look at like all of these squares on a piece of paper, if that makes sense. So what I do is a couple days before test time, I will just sit down and I'll go ahead and copy all of the PowerPoint slides onto a big Word document. And for me, it's way easier to understand the information when it's kind of like chronological on a sheet of paper versus a bunch of slides, if that makes sense. And obviously you could just do this during class, you could do it after class. I personally just like to go ahead and do it when I'm sitting down to start studying. So as usual, I'm just gonna go ahead and get all my notes prepared onto a document. Pretty much I've taken all these notes since classes started this semester. So I just keep one document for the class. And then every time I go back to class, I just open it back up. And as you guys can see, I have all my notes in here. And if you're wondering how I got the diagrams, I literally just screenshot them off of the notes that my professor posts. It would honestly probably be a little bit smarter if I did it, you know, right after class because that way I would retain the information. Um, but I don't, so I'm not gonna tell you guys that I do that. And then after I have everything copied down onto my Word document, I print it out, I close my laptop, and I just study the paper because I don't know about you guys, but I cannot study on a computer. I will end up getting distracted. I'll watch YouTube videos. And at the same time, it's just so much easier, in my opinion, to see things on paper and be able to highlight and star and just flip back and forward instead of having like a billion tabs open on your computer. I know I already mentioned this, but I cannot emphasize how important it is to just listen to your professor and pay attention to those things that they repeat over and over again or you know those things that they say this will be on the test and make sure you copy that down and do something so that you know in three weeks when you're sitting down to study you'll know to really pay attention to that what i like to do is i just like to color code the specific things that my professor says compared to what's already on their powerpoint if that makes sense now the other day i got a dm on instagram from someone and she was like hey like thank you so much for your study tips the only thing is my professor doesn't post anything online and in class they literally just verbally talk they don't don't have any kind of PowerPoint or anything like that and first of all I feel you I've had several professors like that and she was basically asking like how should I take notes for this class and honestly the best thing I would recommend is just going and getting the textbook and reading the textbook it's gonna be a drag because I know how long reading textbooks takes I am NOT a strong reader whatsoever um, so for me that's like my last resort but what's nice is you know that the textbook probably has all the information that your professor is going to use unless they tell you they're going to have other resources on the exam. So yeah, if your professor is stubborn and does not like to post anything online for you to help, I would recommend just going through and reading the textbook and you know how at the beginning of the chapter there's the objectives just really make sure you understand each of those objectives because that's probably what your professor is going to test you on. Moving on to the next part is planning. So I kind of talked about this in the beginning, but it's really, really important to set yourself up uh, for success and just know if you're gonna have a busy week beforehand. I told you guys the other day that the past two weeks were so insane just because I had three exams each week and that's so overwhelming. And I feel like I would have felt so much more relaxed if I just started studying earlier. So even I now, like I know I'm sitting down and giving you guys advice. I just want you to know that I'm not perfect and. I don't want to come across like I'm this like study queen because I'm really not because I'm still learning myself. Something that I constantly remind myself is the earlier you start studying and planning, the better you will do. So kind of like how I used to request off with work beforehand, at the beginning of the semester I will always just take my agenda and I'll go through and I will write down any exam I have 
And then um, the days prior, I'll write down start studying for finance exam, start studying for management exam. And that way I'm constantly reminded that I have these exams coming up. Something that I've actually started doing is just counting how many chapters are gonna be on my exam and giving myself that many days to study. And I feel like that's sufficient enough because it's not realistic. Like you can't sit down and learn eight chapters in one night. It's just, it's not gonna happen, honestly. So if you have an eight chapter exam, try your best to start studying eight days in advance. And I know that's kind of a stretch, so maybe if you have eight chapters on an exam, do two chapters a day and start studying four days in advance, if that makes sense. Now, I do wanna say, I am the type of person where if I give myself way too much time to study, I can get a little distracted. Like, I'll be sitting down and I'm like, oh, it's okay, like my exam isn't for another week, like I can mess around right now on YouTube, it's fine. But think about how stressed you felt the last time you crammed for an exam, and as soon as you put that thought in your head, you're gonna snap out of it and be like, no, I need to study. So just give yourself more than enough time to study. And even if you sit down and you're like, oh my goodness, I do not need four days to study for this exam, this stuff is so easy, oh well, at least you're giving yourself that extra time, and that means you're gonna do all the more better on the exam versus giving yourself half that time. All right, let's do this. So on to the next part and pretty much the final part of this video is the actual process of studying. All right, so now that it's October, you guys have most likely had the first exam in each of your classes. I know I have. And a great way to kind of base your studies is pretty much basing it off of the first exam. So think about the first exam you had in the class. Did the professor use old quiz questions? Did they use old homework questions? Was it similar to material that was in the textbook? Kind of try and like get in their brain and figure out how they're making these exams. That you guys will help you so, so much. I feel like a lot of times you do the worst on your first exam just because you're going into it completely blank and you have no idea what to expect. But after that first exam, usually the style they use to make their first exam, they're gonna use that same style continuously. Now, I'm gonna share one of my biggest secrets that I don't think I've ever talked about on YouTube, but this is something that has seriously saved my butt in college. Okay, so your professors probably assign you textbooks, right? And they're most likely gonna test you on what's in the textbook. Now, what you can do is you can look up the name of your textbook online and then you can also type in questions or maybe like practice questions or practice test questions and a lot of the time online it's for the public you can buy practice questions that go hand in hand with that textbook usually the teachers get them for free but the public can just buy the questions and a lot of times you guys professors will literally use very similar questions they'll just sometimes rewrite them um, to what is given with the textbook so what my friends and I usually do it's, it's, it's usually like $30 or something like that. We'll just split it. So I paid $15 this semester because I split it with my friend. And um, that gave us a huge set of practice questions that we would not have had otherwise. And then the next tip that has literally saved my ass all throughout college is using Quizlet. So if you've not used Quizlet, what are you doing? You need to go on there and look at it. Pretty much with Quizlet, it's like you can make practice test questions and sets and flashcards. And a lot of times students from past years will have already uploaded so much material on Quizlet that you don't even have to take the time out of your day to make the set. So personally what I like to do is I'll usually go on Google and I'll type in Quizlet and then I'll type in the course name and my professor's name and it'll usually come up with a ton of sets that past students have made and it's open for anyone to use and um, that's a really good resource because it's stuff that past students have made and if nothing comes up for that or you're wanting to find even more information you can also type in the name of your textbook that the professor assigns and then type in the word Quizlet and then the chapter and bam, once again, that's even more study material that you can use to study. As I mentioned with note taking, I love to print stuff out. So here are like some of the past Quizlets that I used for my test last week. I actually ended up making this set myself, but as you can see, I just have definitions and then the answers. It's really easy to go through. Quizlet just gives you a ton of options based on how you study because you can also make flashcards, practice tests, practice quizzes, all that kind of stuff. The next piece of advice for you guys as far as studying goes that I have for you is kind of look at how you're studying. Are you in a good environment? Are you in a clean environment? 
are the people you were talking or are they actually studying all that kind of stuff can actually really affect how well you do on an exam and I have always been someone that does not like studying with other people however last week I studied with a couple of my friends for my econ exam and holy cow that helped so so much because I felt kind of clueless going into it and um sitting down and studying with them i feel like i was able to learn so much so much quicker from the people i was studying with compared to how much i would have learned if i tried to read the textbook all by myself if that makes sense so if you have friends that seem knowledgeable in the topic i would definitely invite them to hang over go on a study date with them because three heads is better than one and that's for sure all right you guys so i think that's about it for this video if i remember anything else i'll either do maybe a part three to this video or i'll just leave it in the comments below but i would really love if you guys leave me any of your study tips i think it's amazing how this community can help each other out so much and i mentioned it at the beginning but it literally does mean the world to me that i'm able to help just at least one of you guys uh with how you study all right you guys that is basically it thank you so so much for watching this video i love y'all so much as i mentioned don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and check me out on Instagram. But yeah, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you very, very soon in my next video. Bye guys.